um, the more air cooling guys or water cooling. So you have a novice, um, rookies, and enthusiasts. Yeah. So the first competition that that launched um, last weekend mm -hmm. on my birthday, actually January thirtieth. Yeah, happy birthday! <laughs> Thank you very much. What a, what a great occasion. Um, anyway, the competition launched uh, runs until. March 2nd if I'm not uh, mistaken and then after that we launched a formula competition so it's yeah. kind of in two it's not running at the same time it's in two brackets oh, yeah. um, very important you can only have one account so you have to sign up for one of either of the, of the, of the competitions uh, as said before if you're elite or extreme you can only go to the extreme series if you're if you haven't done yeah. any of them two in the past and no um, experience with extreme cooling you can go into the formula series competition yeah. All right. so that's very interesting because it's uh, I think it's there's not that many competitions where we actually um, I wouldn't say segregate but like uh, split off like the two types of overclocking which are very different on the on the on the basics of how high you actually clock, right? So it's gonna be interesting to see how many people actually decide to go for the just for the air one, or maybe eventually move on to the extreme because the the prices are also different. It's mm -hmm. Not the same kind of prices you can win, but yeah. Well, all the information is up on HWBot and OC Esports. Uh, if you have any questions, you can also put them in the comments below. I yeah, suppose that sure. someone's monitoring the uh, comments. I'm trying to monitor that <laughs> once in a while. <laughs> and um, in case you don't have any questions and you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Yeah. And um, if not, then well, close this window, I suppose. Oh, and don't forget, next Monday, a, uh, 9, 9 p.m. Eastern time in the U.S., we have another Q&A session. So last time that was on a Sunday, this time it's on a Monday, so pay attention. Truthman is skiing, so you can do that every day. <laughs> All right, so uh, until the next time, yeah, and stay have tuned. a good day. Bye. Hi everyone and welcome to The OC Show Season 2 Episode 2. Uh, I'm Truthman from Overclicking TV and on the side you can see Timote Tixiala from Taiwan. Hey Timote, how are you? Hey guys, uh, everything good, Truth, thanks. Um, so today in The OC Show we're going to discuss uh, and answer your question live on Twitch. Uh, basically, what you did, what you saw for the past 15 minutes was the second episode of The OC Show, the second episode of the Season 2. Um, if you have any question about what you just saw or what we're going to be discussing in the next few minutes, actually for the next hour, uh, just feel free to ask that on the Twitch live chat so we can uh, answer right away. We're going to answer although some of the questions we had on the YouTube commentary or on our Facebook fan page. So, by the way, don't forget to subscribe to the Twitch channel, uh, follow us on, uh, on Facebook, follow us on Twitter also. And uh, make sure that if you have any question, just let us know. Um, today we're gonna be having two special guests. The first guest is uh, Dennis Garcia from Adrazalem. Hi, Dennis. Hi, Truthman. Thanks for having me on. Um, hey. So, Dennis, to to just make a quick introduction about you. Uh, basically, you did a few live show with us here on Twitch before for the uh, MSI Mway Roadshow. Uh, mm -hmm. And that was a good experience uh, for both of us. A uh, very special one with like 12 hours of live non-stop. That was actually quite a uh, quite special. Um, uh, what what makes you come back for this OC show? 
And, you know, I like overclocking and, you know, I kind of like talking to you guys. <laughs> and well, and Hardware Asylum is a, it's a website dedicated to enthusiast level hardware, primarily for overclocking and high-end gaming. So, you know, I have quite a bit of knowledge in the uh, segment. So, you know, good person to have around. Well, and we're used to have you on the on the show, like for the uh, for the previous show we did on, in the past. So welcome back again. Uh, thank you for being with us. Uh, yeah. Although today we have with you, we have with us uh, here Don Don Hunter is uh, Matthias from Overclockers eighty from Austria. Hey Matthias, how are you? Good, but please don't say Australia. It's it's <laughs> it's too cliche, really. <laughs> Peter already did that on the. On the show, I think so I'm pretty sure it. Truffman did it on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> it was like Austria. Oh, it was Austria. Not the so, L, it was just Austria. Yeah, Austria. so you're from Austria in Europe. It's uh, it's between actually for the the people that don't know geography, it's between uh, Germany and uh, Italy and Switzerland. Italy, it's, Switzerland. Yes. It's, it's it's touching it's the heart all three of Europe. It's, oh, it's it? like really in the middle of Europe. It's 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 center Europe. So. That shouldn't be somewhere down below Germany. It should be the center of Europe, in the heart. Okay, yes. so and you guys are the heart of Europe. You guys have amazing <laughs> mountains, actually. <laughs> and Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yes, yeah. Okay. We had a snowstorm today, so it's 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 really like um, half a meter of snow out there. So awesome. it's not Australia here. Okay. <laughs> so so this is a truly uh, live uh, thing. We had some uh, some issue with the sound just before. Uh, this is a true live for the OC show season two, episode two. Uh, I'm living in Montreal right now, live from there. Uh, Dennis is live from the uh, west coast of the US. Matthias is live from Austria in Europe. And Timothy is live from Taiwan. So that's, we are pretty much like four different time zones. And uh, that was actually uh, a good, uh, a pretty neaty thing to. Uh, to put everything on the live now. So thank you guys for being with us. Uh, we're gonna jump on the few topics we have. Don't forget, if you're watching on twitch.tv right now, you can ask us any questions. Um, if you're watching the replay on YouTube, you can ask in the comment and we're gonna answer in the next OC show. So Timothy, can you tell us a bit more uh, why the OC show is doing the live and the recording things? Because some people were yeah. asking that before. Uh, so the LC show, it actually started in, in uh, the Overclocker magazine, that's uh, 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 like a web magazine actually, which you can read mainly online, they don't have a printed version. And uh, we were uh, last year recording one episode for every issue of uh, that magazine. So it was a 45 minutes long, almost one hour episode, where we were trying to pack everything that happened in the last two months into... Uh, into yes, into into that one video, and it was really hard to sometimes pick the topics and you know try to mention everything because there's actually so much going on. Last year they had there was like 97 competitions uh, hosted just at HWBot, so that's quite a lot, and so it was really hard to mention everything. So for this year we started to make the a smaller format which we record every two weeks. So every two weeks you have a new episode and every week in between. So like today we have a live Q&A so like that everyone can actually uh, join and ask us questions in relation to that episode or just in relation to anything else actually that uh, might might come up, you know, any questions you guys have. And also the point is to actually have guests on the show. So today we have two guests and that's actually awesome. And our two guests are Dennis from Arbor Asylum and Matthias from Overclockers.80. Um, the first topic we had the discussion in the season two, episode two of the OC show was the second, the announcement of the second stop of the HWBot World Tour. So, Timothy, can you tell us a bit more about the, this World Tour and why the second stop in Europe is actually an important uh, step up for that? Sure. So, um, the HWBot World Tour is a series of events um, by HWBot. So, this year, uh, the, the, it was a it was a point to do something something new and something where uh, new members from the community would be able to join and maybe try LN2 for the first time or at least meet up with the guys that can do it and be inspired by them. So we are going to hold three events around the world. Um, there will be one in uh, Montreal, Canada, in uh, early March at the LAN ETS. There will be another event at the Gamers Assembly in France in early April, actually on the Easter weekend. And there will be one more in early June, hosted right after Computex in Taipei. So all of those events are um, basically bench parties. So you go there and just like a LAN party, you bring your own computer. Uh, we make sure there's LN2 there. 
and you bench and have fun overclocking your rig. And the idea is by be having a social event like that is for you to learn from everyone else that is around you, have a chat, you know, about hardware, about all that geeky stuff, and eventually learn to push further your system and compete in more competitions eventually. So at those events, there will be three things. That bench party, there will be a... Also, the HDOGBOT World Series, which is uh, exclusive qualifiers or competitions, uh, part of that World Series uh, thing. Um, and there will also be amateur workshops. So since we do them at LAN parties, people will be able to go to the LAN party either as gamers or as visitors, uh, attend a workshop, be taught the very basics of overclocking uh, just on your CPU, for instance. And uh, then you have access to compete in uh, competitions just for the guys that just learned overclocking. So you're not going to be facing the, the guys with liquid nitrogen or anything like that. So it's going to be a, a very fair competition for someone that starts and there's some cool prizes to win, like computer parts, uh, bench tables, etc. Et so don't useful say, stuff for overclockers. Don't I'm not say mentioning too much. anything else. <laughs> <laughs> did you say something? No, no, I don't think you did. Uh, so basically the World Tour is just a series of events. For now, there's three events that's being announced. There's a lot of people asking questions right now on the Twitch chat or, or we have that by emails or over Twitter and Facebook. Uh, basically they're asking, hey, can you make a, like a, a tour in Argentina? Can you make a tour in, uh, I don't know, in, uh, in somewhere else in Asia? Can you make a tour in Australia? Stuff like this. Australia, not Australia. <laughs> So, uh, what's the stand about that, Timote? Do you do you think there's gonna be more? Maybe uh, next year that's gonna extend. Well, this year this year is the first year we are doing the tour, so that's why we picked those three locations because they were for us the, the the easiest ones to start from, right? Because we did Mont we are doing Montreal because you, Truthman, you live there and you're helping a lot for the logistics. We're doing the one in France because we have very good contacts with the organizers of that land party in France. Plus, the location is quite accessible. There's a small airport nearby where Ryanair is flying. So it's quite practical. There's also a high-speed rail coming there. And the one in Taipei is also super practical because HDIBOT has their offices here in Taipei. Plus, Computex is usually a huge meetup for the, the top guys uh, from the overclocking scene. So those guys will already be there. So it's really easy to get them there. Um, we we talked about other places. There has been some discussions. There's even some guys that uh, send us emails to propose locations, and we are looking into it. So right now, there's no other locations uh, locked in, but we are looking into expanding the world tour in more regions. That's for sure. So to answer the question from Electroca Beza from the Twitch chat, um, no, there is nothing scheduled in Argentina, but maybe next year or maybe in the future there will be one. Who knows? Um, Argentina or somewhere else in South America, for instance. Yeah, sure. Because now it's northern North America. It's although Europe and Asia uh, over the past six months of the year, of the first uh, half of the year. Um, do you guys plan to attend, Dennis? I know that uh, you might be attending the uh, the North America stop, right? Yeah, possibly. Um, still haven't worked out flights yet, so we'll see how it goes. Ah, that would be cool. I mean, you, you can be there as overclockers benching with liquid nitrogen in, or even participating in the World Series, or you can even be there as media and doing the live with us <laughs> live from the from the, yeah, event sure the line it, yes. I'm sure if I showed up as media, you would probably pull me on camera. But uh, <laughs> the nice thing about LAN ETS is that um, if you are there for the LAN party, you pay for a seat. Otherwise, you can just kind of walk in and wander around. So it's kind of open to everybody that's in within, you know, driving distance of Montreal. Yeah, actually, we have some uh, Canadian guy right now on the on the Twitch chat. There's uh, Mind Blowing G that is from uh, Montreal, and we have uh, I think that's Camex uh, that is from uh, Toronto. So you guys, if you want to attend uh, this, you can attend either as uh, overclockers with LN2 seats, so you go, you can uh, buy your tickets to go there, or you can just be a visitors to come and uh, attend some of the workshop. There's the the amateur workshop, so you just get trained. Um, uh, you can just go and see the competitions. There is the, a Southern Gamers Live that's going to be at the LAN ETS from the 6th to the 8th of March. That's actually the biggest LAN party in Canada. Um, although we want to thank the LAN ETS organizer for letting us organizing this uh, 
like side event inside their event at the same time uh, they they all think that uh, that's going to be a great idea and a great additions and we can announce that um, microbyte is going to be an official sponsor of this uh, this event we're providing some prizes for uh, some prizes for some of the competitions we can we don't want to say more you guys will see what's going on after that um, if you have any question, you can uh, go on the hwbot.org website or you can even go on overclocking-tv.com to see all the details about that. Um, if you want a ticket for the live, uh, for the LN2, uh, special LN2 area, so the, uh, the, the, the World Series uh, tickets, uh, go there and buy it because there's only a limited amount of seats available. So that's, that's yeah. about it. Uh I also have one thing to to add to for the, the like catching up on one of the comments on the on the on the chat, uh, asking if there is some one versus one in, in overclocking. Um, there are amateurs, so the competition, uh, the World Series for amateurs. So the competition for amateurs that would be held at one of those events, uh, they they will be facing each other in one versus one stuff. So it will be a double elimination system. And it would be quite interesting. And it would be actually very fastly paced. So that would be like 15 minutes overclocking rounds, uh, one versus one. So that would be interesting to watch. That's going to be interesting because usually the, the overclocking competitions is you just get like 10, 15, 20, 25 overclockers in the same area. You just give them exactly the same hardware and they just manage to get the, to get the fastest. So that might be changing a bit the, the, the rules of the games and see how that's, uh, that's going on. Um, a good thing to note is, uh, as Timothée said and Peter and Timothée did in the OC show before, if you're an amateur and you don't have, you don't own your computer or, I mean, you don't own your special computer just for overclocking, or you don't want to, you, don't, you never test before, you want to try, but you never test before. Or maybe you don't know all the details. You can just attend there, there's gonna be a workshop, workshop to teach you how to do overclocking, basically, and you can uh, compete after in the, the amateur competitions, per se. Um, don't let that, guys, if you have more questions, just uh, ask uh, them on the Twitch live chat. Um, the second stop gonna be in Europe, uh, Matthias, uh, are you planning to attend this one or maybe uh, considering it? Uh, I know it's that's uh, during the Eastern weekend. I was already asked uh, by one of you, uh, by one of your guys, and I said that I won't attend because I would have to pay it for myself, and it would be yeah, a flight from uh, Austria to France, and so. I don't know. It's it's it's. I love overclocking and I love overclocking shows and doing them and and talking to guys about it. But it's not like I would go to France for that. It's it's. <laughs> it's this is just because it's, it's so far away. <laughs> <laughs> it would be easier if it would be Germany because <laughs> yes. those two countries. It's it's much easier to travel there. It's 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 also really cheap and I may. I get a vendor to to fly me there because they would uh, get something on our website and that's all about oh, yeah. it. But but well, other countries it would be difficult, really. Yeah. Well, you know, you're always welcome if you want to join the uh, the event anyway. Um, the the Timote, can you confirm that all the tickets for both the North America stop and the European stop are actually on sale? So you can buy your tickets for that. Uh, yes, that's correct. So the ticket for um, if you want to participate to the event in Canada in Montreal, that is going to cost uh, eighty US dollars. So for that price, you get a seat there. We make sure, of course, <laughs> you get power, right? <laughs> you can, uh, and you get LN2 access. So there's, uh, there's not really any limits for LN2. Uh, there's gonna be probably around. We can, we can get easy 2,000 liters of LN2. So that's plenty of uh, LN2 for those that wanna bench for three days. And um, there would be the same, uh, same things provided in Europe. That one is going to be for 70 euros, which is more or less the equivalent and that one same thing plus in the addition at the Europe stop you also we also provide a LAN cable access on the on your at your seat spot so if you if at some point you just don't want to bench anymore in the night you want to do some gaming you can always play a, a few rounds of League of Legends at night will you do that well I haven't ever tried League of Legends so I would love to try it <laughs> well there's there's no time. There's, there's always a time to start new things. 
Um, right. Well, thank you, thank you, Timothy, for all the details about that. Um, I'm gonna switch to the second topic. If you guys have any more questions about the uh, Ejibel World Tour, just ask them on the Twitch live chat. We're gonna answer you back uh, by text, not right on the live. Um, in the um, there's an, uh, in the OC show, you did discuss the recent changes in the uh, in the OC leagues at HWBot, but especially in the Elite League. So basically, there's a Dan Cup that managed to jump up to the first spot with the special... He, he found a very nice GP, uh, CPU and then he, he benched it as fast as he can. Um, there's actually like a, a fierce battle between him and the 8-pack. So I think, Timothy, you have more information about that because you're following that like every day. Yeah, so before I talk about the overclocking leagues, maybe we should just mention quickly uh, what overclocking is. Because <laughs> uh, it's true, it's the OC show, it's on Twitch, and some guys might not be exactly aware of uh, what is the principle. So while some people are actually having fun gaming and beating each other on the game, uh, what overclockers do, they increase the performance of their system uh, via tweaks or adjusting slider that uh, make the frequency of the system uh, change and go higher up. And with that, we use benchmarks to measure the new free, the new performance of the system, and we actually just battle on the score of the benchmark. That's the main principle. If you do it on a competitive basis, then some people like to do it just for fun, to fiddle with hardware and know what, what the system can do. So talking about the leaks, um, the leaks on hlibot.org are a ranking of overclockers uh, according to all the submissions they have done, and if you are part of the extreme leagues and the elite leagues, you also have a competition, point, competition points that are added to your total of points. Um, so in the last days, a lot of things have, been, have changed because there has been some adjustments uh, made for the OC Esports side, which is the competitive side for overclocking stuff. And that, that affected the hwbot.org website. And it changed the league for the elite and the extreme guys. So a lot of things have changed. So this is why there has been quite a few discussions in the last days. And the main discussion is about do we keep the competition points into that league system or not? Because right now there's uh, the people that are in the novice league, in the rookie league, or in the enthusiast league, those guys don't have competition points added to their to their point count. So that's the discussion. Do we remove it? Do we keep it? So everyone has its own opinion. There's a forum thread. So you can you can participate to the debate and that's it for now. <laughs> yes, truth, we lost your microphone. We still cannot yeah, hear you. That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> I was just waiting for him to reply, and then it didn't came. <laughs> so I guess, truth, you, while you're looking for a new set of batteries or USB to power your microphone, um, <laughs> it's actually hilarious. Um, so yeah, uh, what do you guys think, um, Matthias? Did you had a? Did you had a? What is your yeah, position? Yeah, I, on that I also have weeks? this noise right here. Yeah, <laughs> it seems to <laughs> plug something in. <laughs> it's the USB power that makes noise. Yeah, yeah. Just, just get a new pair of batteries, truth. <laughs> I also noticed that um, Timothy's and my names are switched on the live stream right now. Yeah, actually, that's true. <laughs> uh, it's hilarious. Okay, what do you want to ask? Sorry. So yeah, I wanted to know um, what is uh, what do you think about the the leagues? Uh, which league are you uh, are you right now in on HWBot? I'm in Elite League because okay. uh, we're getting a lot of uh, stuff for testing, and so I've got a lot of engineering samples, and it's already for for years that I have to compete there because oh. yeah. <laughs> yeah. And also, so if they, you use liquid nitrogen, then you uh, automatically get to the league, isn't it? Yes, that's so, right. So if you use LN2, you get it automatically to extreme, and then if you're sponsored, you shall move to to elite, supposedly. <laughs> yes. Yeah, there was some discussion that I that I would have to move to elite, but I said it didn't make any sense because because you know I I don't have the time to to really compete there. 
you will <laughs> need like hours of your day. You will you you will need weeks to get your benchmarks ready, to get your partitions ready. I mean, you you can't just start up your computer and then be there. You know, even if you have all the time a liquid nitrogen here, it doesn't make sense because you would need hours for binning memories and binning CPUs to to mm. be up there. Yeah, that's it's quite a it's quite a lot of work actually if you want to stay up in the leagues at a very very high level actually. You know, I did some uh, projects for 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 money. Like a vendor said, "Hey, come on, we need this world record." And then for one month, I just did that, and I got a reasonable a amount of money. But um, you know, I just like to do it for one project, and afterwards, I'm pretty much exhausted I don't want to overclock anymore because because I dream of pouring a liquid nitrogen into the pot and things like that and then I'm starting to you know <coughs> crack up and after one month I say okay that's it and now I need a pause really mm. <laughs> I mean I see all these guys they, they, are, they are benching each day they are, they are benching weeks and, and, and I couldn't do that I couldn't. Yeah, it's that's true. why. I, <laughs> it's it's like almost it's almost like a, a full sport just doing that. It's 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 a hobby and in uh, at this competition no, level, it's no, very it's hard. No, it's a job. Because yeah, it's a job. Because yeah. look at this. Uh, those guys are posting Facebook messages like each day of their uh, new scores and uh, what memory they just got and 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 how they scored with it. I mean, they are really keeping you up to date, and and. That's that, that's also some kind of mentality that that I and, and and most of the guys I know don't have because they wanna do their projects and then they they wanna go public, but but I don't want to 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 entertain each day, you know. I mm. mean, people. Yeah, yeah. I guess for for them it becomes a marketing job as well, right? They market it themselves is, is. through all those submissions, uh, especially after they that's a few. Yeah, a few of them just got to work uh, like they that's now their work to do it like Vince Kingping is working for AVGA uh, we have their powers uh, in Germany working for uh, Case King there's 8pack working for Overclockers UK um, there's a few Overclockers working for uh, American companies so it, it's it's almost like you do biking every day and then you end up that's being your job and it used to be your hobby so that, that's a limited amount of people that, that manage to, to be at this level and, uh, and this, uh, and this um, like day to day thing. Mm. Uh, Dennis, uh, what do you have uh, in mind about all the, uh, the different leagues and where do you rank actually? I am currently in the Extreme League. Um, I should probably be in the Elite, but that is an elected thing. So, uh, you know, being that I get hardware from manufacturers to test and whatnot but since i am not a you know 24 7 overclocker i didn't see the reason to go into elite so Thanks, i'm still yeah i'm still in extreme which is fun i mean it's um i don't do this for world records or you know i'm trying to get the most points or being on the front page of hardware bot it's more or less for fun and a lot of the overclocking i do is for articles so like lately, you know, one of the latest ones I did was overclocking a 980 um, classified, an EVGA card. And I put that up on uh, liquid nitrogen, got it up to two gigahertz on the core clock. And, you know, basically the article was how to do that and why overclocking on the classified is so easy. Whereas if you were to do the same thing with another vendor's card, it might be a little bit more difficult. So, but in terms of like the leagues and how they they pan out in the new OC esports realm. You know, I'm gonna let the guys that do this every day figure that out. I'll just kind of go along. Yeah. Well, at least I, I actually we we all here we all get hardware for manufacturers from time to time. It just depends on how much you want to use it and uh, how um, how hard the the goal you want to use it for. Um, that's actually a limited amount of people that have this um, opportunity to access free hardware or at least sponsored hardware so some part of it you don't have to pay for it but for the normal guys uh, and says oh okay I just have this uh, like uh, mid-range motherboard and this mid-range CPUs I don't know what to do um, there's actually the, the road to pro OC things on OC esports um, that's uh, actually helping you to just choose the divisions so you can compete with people with people with the same uh, resources as you. Uh, of course, the um, the elite ranking is the one for the top guys. 
uh, if you go um, if you go with a motorcycle or skateboarding okay let's get skate let's uh, let's go skateboarding <laughs> you go skating and then it's like oh uh, yeah but I can I cannot compete with the guys that with Tony Hawk I cannot compete with all these guys yeah sure they're not in the same league you can say or in the same uh, ranking systems but Tony Hawk is not competing anymore anymore yeah he's too old and now he's a bad choice he's he, he's a really bad choice. <laughs> There is a street league now, and there are a lot of different guys, and it's 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 getting much more technical, you know. So, mm. but those guys, they're really they you you can touch them when you skate normally because I've been skating for I don't know like 15 years, and it's it's like no chance. It's it's not that bad with overclocking at all because you know those are really talented guys, and and with overclocking is not 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 100 hardware, but it's like 60 70 percent hardware that is important you know if you got a good chip and you have to know how it's it's not that difficult to get a world record it's just not but skateboarding there are guys that are so talented you have no chance at all you can train for 10 years and you would have no chance at all so that's mm. actually a bad example you know i guess in that kind of sport you have the the magic factor involved <laughs> <laughs> yes. It's it's a real sport because you 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 have your body to be um, perfect for it. You know you 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 have to fall like two meters high down on the floor and you have to stand up and compete again. You know and it's not, not break the your same leg. Without, no. And not break <laughs> your leg. Yeah, it's all about movement yeah. and it's crazy right now. It's it's very technical, but it's but it's still crazy. So if yeah, we come, <laughs> thanks for sharing that. Um, so if we come back to all the ranking things, uh, right now um, Dan Cup is the number one of the elite ranking. Um, see how long that's gonna be because uh, earlier this week Eight Pack was on the first spot. So right now it's uh, Dan Cup, close followed by ten, uh, Eight Pack. Then there is Team AU from Australia, and then we have some. Uh, some of the friends from uh, Russia, uh, Sophos, Derbauer, Stratagos, uh, and from uh, France, and Vivi from South Africa. Yeah. Uh, I'm quite so happy think... there is uh, two French guys in the top 10 and two <laughs> German guys in the top 10, although. Yeah, so actually, if uh, for the people that are watching, um, looking at the, at the leagues, uh, especially if you look at Elite or Extreme, it's maybe uh, it's very impressive if you look at the total of points those guys have and if you actually want to get started I would recommend to not necessarily focus at all on those leagues but just go on the LC Esports site and uh, pick a competition for which you actually have hardware to compete in so you don't have to uh, add extra investment to it and just try out some very simple benchmarks and see if you can get something out of there just with what you have this is usually the most fun part with overclocking anyway. It's about doing something cool with what you already got. Yeah, the, the goal for overclocking, and I've always been doing that, uh, that's why I actually don't uh, own yet an X99 platform. Uh, it's just because I just like to do that for fun. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about a special challenge that's going on. Uh, actually, I got some very old hour just to, just to mess with it. Um, for you guys that want to just check out uh, what you could do in the competitions, there's the Road to Pro OC. Um, you can see that right now on the screen. So the Road to Pro OC is basically the, uh, the Pro OC in different divisions. Um, there's of course, uh, the divisions are based on the hardware requirements. So let's say you want to bench on your cell phone. You can, say, you can take it, I think that's division 6. Uh, you have uh, i3 and uh, a GTX 200 series, so you can go in a special division just for that. So the other requirement just make sure that you compete against people that have the same uh, resources as yourself. So that's uh, give you a chance. Uh, of course, if you just start, there's no chance you can catch up with 8 pack at Dan Cup. Even myself, uh, with all the uh, the access I can have, I cannot even compete with them. But I could. I could compete in some of the divisions in that one. I don't know yet which one I'm gonna pick, but I yeah. think I'm gonna, I, I will take like a like an old one, like all the old <laughs> hardware, like the very very uh, old one. Uh, Actually, I, I'm competing in the division six. <laughs> do you oh, with your cell phone? Android. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's a, hey, it's fun. Still. It's fun, you know. Now, talking about Android, uh, in the OC show, they, there was like a, a portion talking about the uh, the special competitions uh, you uh, you guys had at HWBot with the uh, uh, mobile geeks uh, about yeah, the, the uh, overclocking Android cell phones. Yeah, I don't know if you guys tried uh, 
benchmarking on Android, but um, so that that competition was a try to see uh, what people would do actually, and a lot of people even went all the way. Some people, some guys even went all the way to fa uh, applying face change on their phone, which not necessarily got them to the victory, but you know that this You're just about some Hira. guys. <laughs> yeah, he was. <laughs> yes. Yeah, he was. He went face change. Uh, Arise, the guy from. Uh, from Romania, actually, one he got um, over three gigahertz on on his smartphone, and it's actually a lot of the benchmarking on Android is very different from uh, on your Windows PC because on your PC it's all about uh, tweaking the the frequencies, and usually you don't use just software. You can also also mod your your boards and things like that. On smartphone, everything is so tiny, and usually the screen is soldered to your to the motherboard. It's not very practical, so everything right now it's still very software based. So it's all about tweaking the kernel and things like that. So, well, that's what yeah, it was called the uh, the tweaker challenge. Uh, yes, it was course. very very tweaking centric competition. You can modify the ROM, you can modify the the, the systems and so on. Uh, yeah. You can put the the cell phone in the fridge and then get it out just for <laughs> benching, like like Arise did and uh, won the competitions for that. Yeah. Um, Den I, Dennis, you tried you benching your smartphone. No, I have not tried to bench my smartphone. Um, I have a hard enough time making calls on it. <laughs> <laughs> well, cell phones used to be used for calls. I know we could use them just to mess around with them. Uh, we do. Yeah. We should have like a console overclocking sessions, like uh, overclocking the Super NES or overclocking the PS3. Uh, that that would be very freaky to uh, to compare and uh, and make sure this all works after that. Um, one of the big uh, things I was talking before is the uh, like the old RA competitions, and that's where Matthias is with us today. Um, the guys at HWBot and Overclickers.80 are having a memorial challenge in uh, memory of our friends uh, Turrican that uh, sadly passed away end of last year. And this challenge is to remind him uh, on on to to make in memory of him to make sure that. Uh, his passion for hardware is always uh, welcome and keep continue. Uh, Matthias, I think you can say a bit more about that as you guys are partnering for, for this uh, special challenge. Yeah, um, we had the idea, it, it, was, it was in September, like two weeks after Carl died. Carl is his real name and we were all... Uh, I mean, most of the guys you know by nickname, but when you know somebody really good, then, then you just go for his normal name. And he was one of those guys, you know, he was sleeping in my apartment for uh, for the shows that we had here in Vienna. And, um, you know, you get to uh, know these people really well when, when, uh, when, when things get uh, hot, like, you know, this, those, those three-day overclocking, events they they they're, they're really close you know you have problems you have to fix them then you have this live stream and then you have to write in the forums and you you know and and you're doing it all together and then you're trying to do world records while doing that you know <laughs> so it's pretty stressful so it, it gets you close together and 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 we did that uh, a few times and and then I've then I knew him for I don't know like nine years in the forums something like that nine years maybe maybe eight uh, and you know you, you you have been reading somebody every day you know you have been working uh, with somebody in the forums who was a moderator and 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 you know talking about this and that uh, about users about how to fix something in the forums and and then suddenly he dies you know mm. and you're standing there and you can't yeah, do anything. Yeah. And it's 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 also it it was really difficult because you know we were online and we didn't know his family. You know we knew him and we knew him from all these um, from all these VN, uh, from all these uh, Viennese events. But but his family we didn't know how if they really know us, you know, if if they know that Overclockers was really important for him, if they know that HWBot was really important for him, we just didn't know. So, um, you know, we read it in the papers that he died. It was like, you know, this Porsche that went off the road. And then we saw pictures 
and you know we we saw like hundreds of pictures of his Porsche because because he was really proud of it and 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 he was uh, you know it 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 was like one of his overclocking rigs. He really loved it and he built it and 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 he and he cleaned it you know and then once he came to Vienna and showed it you know and but he was driving really careful so so he was not this race driver he was he was this 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 guy that just loved the Porsche you know <laughs> and uh, and and um, so we knew this Porsche and we saw it in the papers and then we were like you know it, it was just clicking is it him did he just die you know and uh, somehow you know it was a Red Grump uh, trail. Uh, we followed it, and you know, then we saw you know the brakes were red, and and that was what we did last, and and then these tires were closed and things like that, and then suddenly we knew, okay, it was him, you know, after 24 hours, and then I had to call the family, but you know I couldn't because I didn't know um, if they want us to call, you know, I. I so I, I I just called the police first and I asked them, did you do you know did somebody with that name die you know, and they said we know that somebody died there but we can't tell you who it was. So mm. I really had to call the family. I couldn't, you know. So I asked somebody um, else of the administrators of Overclock Society that also knew him um, to call there because. You know, I had to cry the whole day, and I just couldn't do it. And he called, and they—I don't know—they—they they knew that we were calling at some point, and they—they they were somehow, you know, um, I don't know. They—they they knew that overclockers of the T and that the online world and overclocking was really important for him, and they included us. So they invited us to their. Um, to the funeral and 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 we were there uh, and one of our guys could talk about his online life and uh, talked about HW bot you know uh, in front of people that haven't heard that at all mm. you know they, they they knew about overclocking some of them you know the close family but but not everybody and he was able to talk about that and and somehow out of that we um, we said let's do something good out of it you know this is it's just a sad story you know he he was 30 years old and and it just happened so fast and so we said okay let's do a competition and let's do a competition with HW bot and overclockers.it because those are the two websites that he loved the most and I just um, mailed uh, a mass man and, mm -hmm. and uh, I talked about the ideas that I have and he was like yeah let's do it and we had the competition engine and just you know I just need a banner and then I was talking to other friends of, of, of mine that, that, that also knew him and, and one of those guys uh, um, made a nice banner that, uh, that you can see yep. yeah um, I can, I can, I can show it on the screen yeah yeah, that's it. So on the left side, that's, or is it the right side? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, the left. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's it, it's Carl, and and there are also two vendors that are pretty close uh, that also know him. Um, it's Noctua. Those are um, they they have premium air coolers. They are from uh, from 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 Austria, and they always sponsored our events, you know, and they always sponsored him, and he tested their cooler. So this this is also pretty close. And then it's uh, there is also EK water cooling, you know, that's Nico, and Nico he was uh, he was at one of those events where also Carl was, you know, and they, uh, they they got to know each other, and it was just like that, you know people that know each other and, and and so everybody wanted to help out and then we built this 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 huge this this huge donation campaign out of it you know it it, mm -hmm. it was um, you know it was just ideas that that got that got together and 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 before we even knew it we had this competition we had a donation campaign and we had a hospital in 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 Austria 
and 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 then suddenly we wanted to make shirts you know so people could buy the shirts and could donate by buying the shirts you know and this, this is one this one yeah <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you know after like f three months we had it all together and could start the competition and we had a shop and 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 we sold already more than 40 shirts or no, more than 50 shirts I guess uh, so uh, yeah it's it's not like really successful but but I know people are really thankful that we're doing it you know people people write me private messages and 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 just want to tell me that they think it's a great idea to do something like that and uh, that it's a great idea to make this competition with old hardware you know just in his name and um, it's really funny because he was a pretty quiet guy you know he was benching and, and he had all the skills but he wasn't talking that much you know not like me uh, <laughs> and, um, he, he was just doing his things you know and and now all of a sudden out of out of his 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 kind and 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 and, and helpful way um people people do something for him you know something in the public something that 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 he would uh, maybe be even embarrassed of but but people love it you know they want to they want to do something in his name and yeah. that's why I think this is a good thing and and I love doing it well, if, so, you, if you want to participate in the uh, Turrican Memory Challenge, Memorial Challenge, you can go to oc-esport.io and participate um, in the challenge. So actually, Noctua is giving one year for each uh, competitors. That's going to be a, a submitting score in these competitions. Uh, there's two stages. The first one is to submit the best course with the oldest hardware as possible. Uh, as uh, most of us know, Trican was a big fan of old, old, old hardware. And actually, I do have a pretty old mainboard right here just for these competitions. Uh, maybe <laughs> some of you can remember, remember that one. Uh, that's, uh, that's very the old, good, actually. The good old days. <laughs> yeah, the good old days of the uh, Socket 478. That's uh, back, 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 back in the days when uh, Pentium CPU still used to have the pins underneath the, the, the CPU. So the first stage is that one, and the second stage is just go as fast as you can with the GPU. Um, although you can uh, go on the on the shop and purchase uh, purchase one of uh, these T-shirts with a special logo on it, the hardware terminator. Hardware terminator. Yes. Uh, you can <laughs> although uh, when you buy the T-shirt, you can also give uh, make a donations to the children hospital as uh, Matthias just uh, noticed in the in the. In the information before, uh, so far there's uh, uh, some interesting score in that competitions uh, because there's some people that went back to find some very 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 old hardware. Uh, like it even surprised me because I didn't think that 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 was possible on 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 SSC two, you know, because there are some limitations on the implementations that 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 could run code on your um, CPU by doing mm -hmm. it with a graphics API you know <laughs> it's 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 different and and uh, although I, I I played around uh, with you know OpenCL and 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 CUDA for 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 months now you know it even surprised me that people uh, could manage to run it on s such old uh, CPUs it's I don't know uh, I, I think that's that's uh, th that's what's so great in this competition that people have to figure out what's possible you know and nobody has done it before because who who would like to run OpenCL on a Pentium 4 it just doesn't <laughs> matter in the real world <laughs> well actually the 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 one in the first spot of, of this is a uh, Havli and is having a Pentium 4 1.5 gears Willamette it's a circuit 423 I didn't even knew that you can even find online this kind of mainboard. The, the oldest one I could find on eBay was the uh, the P4P800 from Asus uh, that used oh, the yeah. I used to have one like that, yes, <laughs> true. <laughs> Actually, I, I remember that I did overclock a lot on these ones. Uh, I still have a lot of CPUs that I find back when I was working before and it's like, okay, I'm just gonna keep them in the, in the tray somewhere when uh, that's gonna be useful. And guess what? Today, that's that could be useful and for a good cause at the same time. Um, 
Well, thank you, Matthias. Thank you, Matthias, for I, uh, for for. I just for have a little yeah. question. I just wanted to know what you guys think of the benchmark GPUP, because I created it with I don't know something else in mind, and 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 it keeps working. I don't know. You know, I just wanted to yeah. make it happen because I didn't know if it was possible and now it's possible and I just want you guys I don't know what do you think of it for overclocking what uh, what does it do for overclocking well it, it's uh, for my for my personal opinion I I didn't even try to run it on the like like this I just I was like a GPU by just just couldn't run that on the, on the GPU I was like yeah you can run that on CPU it's like okay I'm just gonna run that on CPU there's like ah okay uh, actually, what what I love the most is, uh, uh, to be honest, I didn't use GPU Pi before the competitions. Um, the only thing I like is it takes hours and hours and hours to calculate on very old hours. Uh, for example, that's not what I had in mind. <laughs> really, <laughs> you didn't expect Let's the people to be so low. <laughs> <laughs> so, so for a matter of comparison, like Super Pi. Uh, you can do that in like five seconds or okay, maybe five minutes for the longest one if you're on like the latest hardware. And on this one, the 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 guy is using the 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 shittiest CPU we can find is running that for thirteen hours, thirteen hours, <laughs> just making sure that you can just have the score. So that's <laughs> actually uh that's actually good. We don't have that in live competitions because the guys just come on the Friday evening, run the benchmark, leave on Sunday in <laughs> the evening. <laughs> but that's exactly what I wanted to say because I I've done it so 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 people can you know calculate then the digits of p faster you know much faster that's why we have billions and not millions you know but but people somehow always like to run benches like for hours <laughs> because <laughs> because I can't figure out why I wanted to make this you know 30 seconds maybe 10 seconds bench sometime you know and 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 as a homage uh, to run like one million to have one billion but on the graphics card and now it you know there are a lot of cpu entries i didn't want to uh, i i didn't even want to uh, submit the benchmark for cpus it was just <laughs> and i don't know it was some guy in the forum that told me uh, hey you can submit it as a cpu too and i said okay why not i mean doesn't make sense for me because it's GPUP, but I just do it, and now it has I don't know like 200 entries. <laughs> I yeah. didn't think of that. Yeah, Dennis, did you uh, did you try GPU by? No, not yet. I um, some of those new benchmarks I haven't explored yet, so uh, I'll be the newbie. <laughs> <laughs> you always have to go back to the basics. <laughs> yes. Uh, every time there's something new, you have to start. <laughs> so don't forget, guys, if you want to participate in this um, Turrican Memorial Challenge, you can go on oc esportio and look for Turrican Memorial Challenge. Um, next subject is the ROC OC Showdown series from ASUS. So we, we heard earlier this week that um, ASUS will be announcing two... Actually, it's one competition spread over uh, the course of the next uh, uh, of the next few uh, few months uh, they call that the ROG OC showdown so ROG stands for uh, uh, Republic of Gamer of course from ASUS uh, the showdown is split in two series you have the the extreme series and you have the formula series uh, basically the extreme series is for the uh, elite and extreme guys so anyone that used liquid nitrogen before uh, will compete in the extreme series um, that is to make people competing with the same kind of uh, resources and experiences in uh, in cold environments. Uh, although there's gonna be the formula series, the formula series is for anyone that is uh, running air cooling or water cooling, as long as you you don't live like me in the cold, cold winter of Canada when it's like minus 25 outside, and uh, as long as you don't go below zero, you can stay in the formula series. Um, the first, uh, the first part of this series, like the round one, there's going to be three rounds through the next uh, to 2015. Uh, the first round for the extreme series is already already uh, already going on. It's going until March 2nd, so that's going to finish the week before uh, we have the uh, LAN uh, HW World Tour at LAN ETS in uh, North America. And then the Formula series starts from March 6th to April 6th. 
So for now on, all the details regarding the Extreme Series Round 1 are available on the HWBot site. And if you go on oc-esport.io, you can also see that there's some people competing already. And guess why? Dan Cup is first again. Uh, so far, he's hmm. having the, uh, the the biggest points. We can see Ferger from the US, uh, Mortisboro from Greece, uh, another US guy, Gunslinger. Uh, we have uh, Nachario from Argentina, uh, Maudi from uh, Germany again, and a few other guys uh, going down. Uh, this competition is uh, organized by Aesis, um, and you have to run uh, Cinebench, Cinebench R15, uh, 11.5. You have to run uh, XTU at 5.5 gigahertz, and although the 3D Mark Fast Strike Extreme. So there's like a, a balance between like uh, CPU and uh, and GPU benchmark uh, at these levels. Um, keep in mind that between the Extreme series and the Formula series, uh, you have different hardware requirements. Uh, Extreme series, you need to use um, Z97 or X99 motherboard, uh, while on the Formula, you can use uh, Z87 or Z97 motherboard. So if you have X99, you have to go compete in the Extreme series because you own X99, you have a good and strong CPUs, and you might have DDR4 uh, that can go very high in the, uh, in the scores. Um, so for most of the guys, uh, the formula series is going to be the most interesting si I I interesting one, especially for people uh, watching us on Twitch right now uh, that uh, usually are gamers. Um, there is, as you can compete with air cooling and water cooling, there is no reason to not participate in that one and uh, make sure that uh, you can at least try to grab uh, one of the prizes that is uh, in the competitions. Um, Timote, do you have anything to add about that competitions? Uh, any insights you might have or uh, any recommendations for people if you want to participate? Uh, well, there's two things, right? Like you mentioned, it's for one there's one for the guys that do uh, extreme cooling and the other one for the guys that don't use extreme cooling. So I would just suggest that you actually participate in the one that is designed for the type of cooling that you actually have and want to use. Uh, so for people that never tried uh, overclocking, I would uh, recommend waiting for the Formula series and give it a try on air cooling or if you have a water cooling, uh, it will be a very fun competition uh, for, for, that, for that matter. And some very cool prizes as well, actually. If some of you are looking to, uh, to uh, build up a new rig, it might be actually worth um, taking a bit of time looking at it and figuring a way to get to, uh, to the top, top five spots of it. Interesting. Um, Dennis, do you plan to participate in these competitions? No, not that one. I elected <laughs> to skip it. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you just you just prefer like mm, okay not this one I'm gonna take the next one. <laughs> well, we, I, I can pick and choose really. You know that's the beauty of overclocking, and uh, yeah. So maybe next time. Um, <laughs> re regarding this uh, this OC showdown, if you want to have more details, you can uh, ask us on the Twitch chats right now, or you can go on overclocking-tv.com. We have a news with uh, some of the details about that. Um, I think that we're gonna have more and more information during the next OC shows, especially because uh, uh, that um, that competition, the ROC uh, ROG OC showdown, is going uh, through the 2015 uh, editions. Uh, regarding all the other competitions, you can go on oc esportio and you can find the different uh, competitions that's going that's going to be uh, that's going to be during the year. That the ones that are already announced. So we can see that we have the Pro OC. The Pro OC is the one we uh, did speak a little bit before uh, with the different div divisions. So if you want to bench cell phones, you can say uh, I'm gonna go in the division six. If you want to bench. Uh, i3 and some uh, low-end graphic cards you can go in some of the other divisions if you want to bench the biggest hardware you can get you can go in division one so be sure you pick the right divisions because once you are in it you you won't be able to change until the next round for it um, but then once you're in it you can just compete with people that have the same kind of hardware as as you have uh, we can also see the uh, ROG here, that's the round one. Uh, there's going to be round two and three uh, announced later in the year. And we already have some uh, competitions before, like the HyperX C takeover that uh, uh, was happening in Vegas last month. Um, Timothy, do you want to discuss anything in the last five minutes of this live show? Because it's almost an hour that uh, we are being live. <laughs> 
actually what I wanted to talk about is uh, to give the to 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 ask uh, Dennis what is going to be on the menu for the next uh, Hardware Asylum podcast. Oh right, yeah, we have a new Hardware Asylum podcast coming out tomorrow. And being that this is February, the month after CES, the first portion of it's going to kind of be a CES wrap up. I did an interview with uh, Greg King from Tech Gauge about some of the things that we saw at CES and what he liked and what we didn't like. Um, we're also going to be talking about the EVGA 980 classified overclocking experience. And I have a couple of product reviews in there as well. So it's going to be kind of full featured and a bit rambly, but I think it will be uh, beneficial to several people. So as usual, where do we find this podcast? <laughs> you find it at hardwareasylum.com slash podcast. You can also subscribe to 